But what if I wanted to look like um, like one of the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park? Could we do that? Maybe that's another segment. <laughs> And I'm Hannah, and we're here at our Super, Super Secret, Secret Mystery Meeting. Meeting. We're at Alicia Nicole and Co, and she's gonna teach us how to do our makeup when we run. Yes! <laughs> hey, Alicia. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so, Alicia, yes. is it okay to run with your makeup on? So technically, there's two answers. So if you use a really good foundation that allows your skin to breathe, the answer is yes. But if you don't, then you want to take it off. Do you know a lot of women who work out and use makeup? Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like just because you work out, if you, care of your, you take care of your body, you definitely want to look good when you're doing it too. So. Right. Exactly. Uh, and I feel like, why do people like shame women for wearing makeup when they're like running or working out? Do you know? You know what? I don't know. It's a weird thing, but I feel like that's more of like a personal problem. Yes. If they're worried mm -hmm. about that, that's their issue and you do what makes you happy. You but do you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, okay. Do you have like tips and tricks to help us like look flawless while we're running and also not have to use a thousand products? Yeah. I what? Seriously? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Can you make us look like a whole different person? No, we don't want to do that. Oh. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to enhance your features, Allie. So now we're like, all, we're all Alicia Keys up in this. You know, we have no makeup no on. Makeup. So oh, let's, sorry. let's do this. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to get my makeup done for race day. So do you, have you ever had a client that, um, like got their makeup done for a race? Um, <laughs> I would say not yet, but other things that are like, like if they're doing yoga or if they're coming in for lessons to learn how to do their makeup for just their lifestyle, I do see that a lot. That's pretty common. That's, that's awesome. Because everybody wants to look good. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I don't blame them. <laughs> so normally what I would have everybody do is start with your eyes. Just because if you're doing anything on your eyes, they tend to make a little bit of a mess. So mm -hmm. you always want to start there. So this product is the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. This is an NW20. And this product I chose because it's multifunctional. So you can use this on your eyes as an eye primer to help your shadow stay. Mm -hmm. And then it also is going to be the concealer we use underneath your eyes. And it's completely waterproof. Oh. oh. So it'll stay through. If you're running in elements, if you're working out and sweating, this does not break down. It has an anti-crease proof technology in it. Wow. So it's really built to stay. What if I'm crying while running? You're good. Awesome. Not going anywhere. What if you throw <laughs> water on your face while You're running? You're good. Mm -hmm. You can do that too with all these products actually. So how do you get it off? <laughs> you can wash your face twice. <laughs> Never nice. comes off. Never comes off. Yeah, you just have to live with it. <laughs> so you can apply with a brush or with your fingers. Either way is totally fine. So once we put that on the eyes, I always recommend these shadow sticks. There, I have a couple of different price ranges. This is Marc Jacobs. So Ooh, they're just fancy. Oh my, I love these. So they're just cream eyeshadow that you apply. You literally rub it on and blend it out with your finger. Done. It's like iridescent and shiny. I yes. love that. So pretty. And this one looks really similar. This is from the drugstore. I think I got this at Ulta. Who's that? Like it's called Essence. I literally got it for $2. Whoa. So if you're on a budget, this one's also waterproof. It says it right there. Nice. So you can use it as eyeliner and eyeshadow. So you're good to go. You literally take it, and what I do is I just pat it in with my finger and pat it all over the eye. Hannah, what does it look like? Oh my gosh, so pretty. You look like a beautiful mermaid. It just like makes, it'll make her eyes bright and awake. Open for me. Beautiful. Do I look bright and awake? Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Other step is the bronzer that we're going to use on your face. I'm actually going to use that in your crease. Oh, So fine. you just take like a fluffy brush, and if you only have one brush, this is the one you want. It is, and this is very reasonable. It's from Morphe. I think I got this for two ninety nine, mm -hmm. and they're really good quality. Whoa. You just have to order it online. So you just take it, pack a little bit on. That is a Nars Laguna bronzer, and you literally take that through the hollow of the eye, work it all over in little tiny circular motions, and you're basically going to push the push the brush inside of that hollow of the eye socket and just work mm -hmm. in windshield wiping motions. And always mm -hmm. make sure you tap off, just oh. so you don't get so much product flying all and over you your get eye. it like all over the rest of your face. Yes, exactly. So that's really it with the eyes. Super easy. So you just literally pack that through the crease. Yeah. Super simple with the cream eyeshadow. Nice. And then you go in with a little bit of liner and just smudge it out. So awesome. it's really easy. So I'm just going to use a really dark brown. Okay. This is almost a red toned brown. It's going to make the green in your eye pop. <gasps> cool. So depending on your eye color, how you choose a color that makes your eye pop is you always choose the complementary color. 
So if you have green eyes, you want to choose something that's red because they're opposite of each other on the color wheel. If you have brown eyes, you want to choose like an amber color. If you have blue eyes, you want to choose something orangey based um, and so on and so forth. So all you literally do when you're putting on the liner is literally just smudge it across the top. And I just take my finger and just literally just press it into the eye. And this is also completely waterproof. Like your whole face can be submerged in water and this product's not going anywhere. That's oh, really good perfect. for me. Good stuff. Now the other thing I'm gonna do open for me and have you look down and then this way. Wait, like that? Yep, you got it. <laughs> is we're just gonna tight line. Ah! I right, so this is the weirdest <laughs> thing. <laughs> Does that feel weird? Yeah. <laughs> so this is called tight lining. So you go in and you fill in the gaps. This is really important to do if you're gonna do eyeliner, because look at the difference, actually. Let me give you oh, a wow. Hair. So if you see yourself, see how thick the lashes look on this side versus yeah. that one? Yeah. Yeah. It's because we made the lash um, base really dense by coloring in the spaces. I had no idea. So okay. I'll give you the mirror, so you're just gonna curl your lashes. Okay. This is the Shiseido brand. You can use any one, even if you get one at the drugstore, that's fine. So you um, just go like that, right? Yep, so pump it, squeeze your fingers all the way together, and open and close. Oh, you're supposed to open and close? Oh. Yes, ma'am. What? I thought you're hold, like, you hold it for 10 seconds. Did I do that? You did, okay. perfect. A lot of people do, but if you hold it, I don't feel like it makes as big of a difference as if you like pump it, because it's like <laughs> little short curls. Did I do that right? Yeah. yeah. Squeeze your fingers all the way together. There you go. So now I'm just gonna add a little bit of waterproof mascara. That's obviously super important. Um, just because regular mascara on a run, if you're sweating, is gonna run. So mm -hmm. just make sure you have coconut oil on hand at home to take this off, because it's not the greatest formula for your eyelashes. Mm. It has a really heavy wax, which is what keeps it on, but it does suffocate the follicle a little bit, so you don't wanna sleep in it. I'm just gonna add a little bit on the bottom. Now, do you normally wear eyeliner on the bottom? I don't, okay. um, or yes, I do. You do, okay. Um, I guess it depends on how much time I have in the morning. Gotcha. It's not necessary, especially if natural, sometimes waterproof mascaras do run on people, so if you do get that, then just don't put it on the bottom. All right, so you said your skin is oily, right? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so to prep the skin, what I normally like to do is add a little bit of oil control lotion. If you're dry, you can replace this step with an illuminating um, primer. Which I was doing, and now I know why I looked oily. Like, it's just really shiny all the time. <laughs> Whoops. Ultra, like you were done, got, just got done working out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Before you started. <laughs> yes. You know what, because I, I saw like this girl in a yoga class and she was so glowy and beautiful. And I was like, I'm gonna look like that. And then I just looked like a hot mess. Right. Oh. Whoops. Yep, this will do it. And you can rub this on with your hands if you want to. Oh. A lot of times I feel like that's nice to work it in. Um, so the product is just gonna help absorb oil and create like a nice little barrier, but still allows your skin to breathe through it. And this is just a little bit of the professional. So this will just help in the T-zone, help you control oil just a little bit. You don't have to do both, but if you're really wanting to make sure you stay more on the matte side, this is good to put in your T-zone. This is like feels nice too. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice little slip. Um, the product that gives it that slip is called Dimethicone. So it's like a plastic derivative. It doesn't harm the skin, but it helps like seal with the water in your pores. So what you can do with this too, if you don't want as much coverage and you want a tinted moisturizer, a lot of people feel the need to buy two different products. You don't need to do that. You just take a little pump of your moisturizer and just mix it on your hand and apply it. Oh, so I you was can apply it. If with. we could do that. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's better than a tinted moisturizer because it gives you more coverage. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that's Sometimes brilliant. I wear tinted moisturizer though in the summer because mm -hmm. it's like not as heavy, but I guess right. that would be the same effect. Sure. And then it stretches your like expensive foundation a lot. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. That's really smart. And this one's pretty good. So I like to always start in the center of the face and work my way out. I don't put foundation over the entire face because I don't think it needs it. Oh. Um, that's a really good tip. That you is a good tip. Yeah. Don't cover your whole face in it. Just put it in the areas that are slightly uneven Yeah. Huh. because that's what's gonna make it look more natural and that's what keeps you from getting the line because your whole face is not the same color. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> that is <true>. <laughs> <laughs> See, I like work it out to like the jawline and then that's 
how you get the. That's how you get the line. Because so here it doesn't ever see the sun. Yeah, right. yeah. So naturally, you're very lighter. You're much lighter under here, and your like cheeks are rosy. So you have different colors all over the face. Yeah. So I like to put foundation where naturally you have bigger pores and more rosiness. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit on the forehead where you get sun damage or sunburn. And then a little bit in through here on the jaw where like some people have like sunspots or freckles. And normally the jaw on the top of the forehead, I do almost nothing. Just huh. because that skin hmm. is normally so even, it doesn't need it. So that way you're not, it doesn't look heavy. Ooh, we just used that cool sponge thing. Yeah, <laughs> this is the best. Yes. Just hold it. <laughs> so cute. You just have to use it damp though. I've oh, seen people wow. use it dry and it's like a thimble. So you just <sighs> don't want to be like using it dry or else it's not going to do its job. All right, that's pretty worked in. All we need to do now is pop a little eye cream underneath your eyes. This is something that everyone should use every day. What is that one? Um, this is called Lightful C Eye Cream from MAC. It's, it's shiny. It is. And it has vitamin C and caffeine in it. Oh my gosh, I need that. I love it. And it's very affordable. I think it's like 19 bucks. Oh, that is so affordable. So it's nothing one. crazy. Look up just a little bit, but it works really well. Hmm. I like to put eye cream on right before I do concealer. You don't want the under eye doesn't naturally have like a ton of pores, so it doesn't lubricate itself. So you mm -hmm. have to add moisture. So do you use a different eye cream for night and day? Then no, not really, okay. not at this point. I would say that for women who are more mature, mm -hmm. they should just because mm -hmm. their skin has different needs. So we're gonna use that same product that we put on your eyes eye primer underneath your eye. Oh, fun! Cool. So it's multifunctional. It's that Mac Pro Long Wear. I'm just gonna have you look up for me. So you don't have a ton of under eye darkness. If you did, I would suggest using a color corrector. So I have, I did pull one out. It just helps to fill in the darkness that some people have underneath their eyes before you go in with regular concealer so it doesn't look gray. Mm. Sometimes mm. it can do that. And what you do, it just kind of looks like this. It's orange. Oh, mm -hmm. neato. And I would use that even on you, like even fair, fair girls. Um, just because you want something that goes on the skin that's going to color correct the blue because it's blood that sits under here oh. that you see through on your skin. Blood. Yes, mm. it's blood. So if I had a black eye, like that this, would do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. For when I to start fighting. <laughs> if you're going like, to take a yeah. boxing. Yes. <laughs> but I'll show you kind of what you do. So you just apply it right in the front, just like that. But you don't have to do that. That's optional. Optional step. Yes. If you feel like your dark and regular concealer doesn't cut it, that's what you want to do. So you That's go over, awesome. just pat your Pro Long Wear Concealer right over top. We needed that for Ragnar. Yeah, we did, because our eyes were so dark. Oh. We ran a 24-hour relay, wow. <laughs> so there was no sleeping. And no makeup. We looked pretty rough. So just take it and pat it on. I like to use my ring finger. It applies the least amount of pressure. And literally just tap it. Because mm. you don't want to swoosh, because this under eye is really delicate, um, and it will move the product around. So you're not going to get coverage yeah. if you're like dragging your finger across your face. Well, I've been doing, I've been doing it wrong. That wrong. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it should go like this. The camera should go, whoa! <laughs> did, you get, did you capture that? Now we're going to give you color. Because I know you said you like want to be a little tan, right? Yes. Uh, get a little yeah. color. Bronzer is like a really good way to do that. I like Laguna because it is a gold base. Okay. So mm -hmm. this product mimics the look of tan skin. So it has like a slight sheen to it. You know how when you're tan, your skin gets like tight and shiny? Yes. This is what this is meant to look That's like. That's really it's just nice. Just like a beachy glow. So you take like a fluffy brush. This is again one of those Morphe brushes, very affordable, like 11 bucks. Ooh. So this is a really, really great brand. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it, you're gonna start right here on your cheek. And you're gonna go in a three and an E. So start right here, little circular motions. You're gonna do a little bit on the forehead because the sun obviously would get you there naturally. So that's all it's meant to do is just mimic the look of sun and then go underneath the jaw and a little bit on the neck. You could stop there, but I think adding a little bit of natural flush is good. Yes. Do you have a preference for the color? Oh, pink always. Perfect. Pink. <laughs> That's always nice is you know when you run, like you get rosy cheeks and it's really mm -hmm. flushed and pretty? Yeah. These are meant to mimic that natural flush. Oh. So you just take like your handy beauty blender sponge. They sell two different kinds. This is actually the more affordable kind. So you can get the beauty blender. They're 20 bucks. These are the real techniques ones, but you can get them for like $6. Whoa. It's what? a little bit, little bit more affordable. Okay, so you just take it and you pop it right on the apples of the cheeks. And these are for the lips and the cheeks. So I love that because then you can, it's multifunctional. And this little guy is ultra gentle. And the skin, you just literally pat it right on. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> so pretty. So it just gives you like a really pretty just flush. <gasps> 
oh, I look like so um, beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I would say lip liner is optional. You okay. definitely don't have to apply it. I'm going to be high maintenance for this, right? Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so you want to take it just a little bit. This is a Charlotte Tilbury one. This is like her best selling one. It's called Pillow Talk. So it's just like a natural rose, almost like a dusty rose color. And this is completely waterproof. Mm. So you just apply a little bit. I like to start in the Cupid's bow and work my way out. It's going to take a little bit of that color we use on your cheek yeah. and apply it right in the center of your lip. And a nice rule of thumb that a lot of people don't know, your cheeks and your lips should always be in the same color family. Oh. Mm. So if you make them, like you wouldn't want to choose like a purple lipstick and an orange blush. Oh. oh. So they should definitely be in the same color family. All I'm going to do is just fill in the brow a little bit. I love the markers just because they do the most work in the quickest amount of time. They're markers? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Literally. So you literally just pop it on and look at your brow. What? Completely wet. Whoa! So like Wait, where two do you seconds. get those markers from? So this one's from the drugstore, but I also use some from Stila. So they're yeah, both yeah. this like little tiny felt tip that you paint on. Are they difficult to use? No, they're the easiest. So what I do when I start is I just draw a nice clean line along the bottom frame of the brow. And then I draw the same thing along the top and that's how you frame out your brow. Super easy. Whoa. Whoa, <laughs> it makes such a big difference. It does. Done. Done. <laughs>